Hi guys and welcome to the channel. Today I want to do something a bit different. I have here two cars, two beautiful cars, the Volvo XC40 and many other cars on the road. I'm so sorry for the noise. I just, the parks are full, everywhere is full. So yeah, sorry for the noise, I'm doing my best. And this is the Corolla TS. They're all brand new, about the same year, 2020. And you know what? This is not a review. This is not a comparison of the two cars. I want to do something else. As you can see, this is a crossover. Obviously, you can see it's a bit higher up the ground and it just looks like a smaller SUV, although it doesn't really look small. Anyways, this is the entry level SUV, you'd call it. And this is a Corolla TS, which stands for Touring Sports, which is an estate car. As you can see, it's not the regular Corolla, it's the estate. Now today I wanted to do something different, as I was saying. I don't, I don't want you to look at the cars, right? I don't care that this is a Toyota Corolla, I don't care that this is a Volvo. I care that this is an estate car and that this is a crossover. And now my question is, which one should you pick? Should you start and continue buying crossovers as the trend would suggest? Or should you maybe go back and look at good old estate cars, which is more practical, which is more convenient and well, definitely, which is the better choice for anyone interested in a car with more space than just a hatchback or a sedan. Now, let's go in one take. First, we'll go through the Corolla because I'm here and I'm next to it, so why not? I'm not gonna look at the front, although if you wanna see the front, here you go. This is the car, this is the interior. All cars are meant to accommodate the driver. So I'm not gonna even look at this because it would be pointless, right? All cars are made to accommodate the driver. But what about the passengers in the back? This is the question. Now I look at the Corolla and this car, this is, I'm not gonna go through options and all that, but this has the panoramic and so does the Volvo. So actually that's gonna matter when it comes to headroom. Let's sit in the back of, well, basically myself. Let's close this, okay. Now I'm in the car, I'm seated. As you can see, I have plenty of room. I can slide my feet underneath. Sorry if I'm a bit dirty. And I have plenty of knee room, no problem whatsoever. And as far as headroom goes, I'm, I'm honestly quite limited in the back because also I'm very tall. I'm 190 centimeters tall, so not your average Joe. As you can see, the other passenger would be just fine here as well. Uh, and there's plenty of room in the front. Yeah, you know, headroom is quite limited for me, but for anyone that's not gigantic, it's gonna be just fine. Let's now get out and look at the other aspects of practicality, which is the trunk. Of course, this is automatic, so I'm just gonna push and this is gonna go up on itself, on its own, sorry. Yeah, I have some tools here. As you can see, I'm gonna push them aside and I don't even know how to actually, I, I, okay. Oh, okay, that's nice. This is the first time I'm trying this, see? This is all one take. So this is a trunk quite spacious, quite spacious. Of course you can fold the seats. This is again a hybrid, this is a hybrid as well. So, you know, there's batteries and all that, but uh, I think it's just a perfect com com comparison. You know, overall, I think they fit pretty much the same um, niche, although this is way more expensive, but we'll get into that later. Or if you want to find out more about the Volvo, go check out my review of the Volvo. Now, that being said, the trunk is quite spacious. You have more than enough and you can fold the seats. Overall, practicality wise, I think this car will do its job just fine. It's quite spacious and there's nothing about it. It's quite simple, quite straightforward. Yes, guys, sorry for the interruption. I just had the nicest uh, meeting with a very nice guy living just next door. He was interested in seeing the cars and so I took a break. Now, moving on to the Volvo. Again, if you want to see the full in-depth review, everything is gonna be on the channel. There's a pop-up link right about now. And if you want, now let's try the back of the car. Now, I won't lie to you, I feel it's basically the same driving position as mine, so it's my driving position, and here I have the same space, leg-wise it's the same, but I feel I have a bit more space when it comes to headroom. Yeah, I think I'm a bit uh, more crushed to the ground, I have a bit more space head-wise, and this also has the panoramic roof. So yeah, this one is a bit more spacious when it comes to headroom. And also it's a bit higher as well. It's a bit easier to get in and out. But besides that, there's not much, much of a difference. It's maybe a couple centimeters of a difference. Now look inside the trunk 
of the Volvo. All right, this is the trunk of the Volvo. Obviously, this is a plug-in hybrid, whereas the Corolla is just a simple hybrid. And you have some storage here, which takes up some space for the cables. Now, overall, I think the trunk is very generous as well. Like the seats, they fold and, and you get a flat zone where you can load your car. So again, practicality wise, I don't think there's much of a difference. This looks a bit bigger because it's packed differently and the car is a bit higher up and therefore maybe easier to access. But space wise, not much of a difference. Now we've looked at both cars. What's the decision? I don't know, maybe driving them, you'll see, okay, this is higher off the ground, right? So you have a more commanding position and you can get, I don't know, maybe speed bumps, you can go a bit faster over speed bumps. I don't, I, I wouldn't recommend that because you're gonna break your suspension. And again, I don't think that you need much more road clearance than this one gives you. But this one does offer, so maybe if you live somewhere in a more or mountain region, kind of, although this is, this is front wheel drive and this is front wheel drive, so don't expect this to be a no road performer. Nor this. <laughs> but yeah, if you live in a, I don't know, in an area where you need very, like, this is essential for you to get more road clearance. As you can see, this has more clearance in the front than this. Uh, not by that much, but still enough so you can notice it. So I think parking wise overall, there's not gonna be that much of a different length wise or, uh, you know, it's, it's about the same size cars. Now, what can we do now to differentiate both cars? I think the best thing to do is to take both cars for a drive and see what's what, which is more, you know, adapted to city driving nowadays. Now that I'm driving the Volvo, you know, it's quite, there's just one thing that's striking between the two cars and that's, here you get a commanding view of the road and it's true that i do enjoy it i'm sitting up high i see everything the car is you know it gives you that confidence that it feels more robust that you're maybe safer that it's true that it gives you a certain feeling of safety you know and um that's just the first thing once you get in the car, that's just striking, you know, in comparison. And not because this is a Volvo, I'm just talking because this is a crossover in general. And furthermore, this is a Volvo and it gives you that much more confidence, you know. That being said, around town, look, I'm in Brussels, there's traffic and I'm, you know, I'm comfortable. You can, not on YouTube, but generally I will listen to my music. I'll be, you know, heated seats, heated steering wheel in this case. So all options you can get in both cars. Again, I'm not going to talk about options nor compare these two cars per se as models, but just as what they are, an estate car and the crossover. I keep saying that because I really don't want you guys to understand this as a comparison review between the CX C40 and then with the Corolla, it doesn't make sense. They're just not in the same price range at all. So it would be pointless to do that. Now, see, I just passed the bump. Uh, what can I say? except that I had a cyclist which tried to run into me facing the wrong way. Anyways, Brussels. See, I get that commanding view. It's true that in this car, maybe you're less worried about bumps and stuff. And generally, you know, everything, those small obstacles. Uh, but this is also pretty much the same experience, except that I'm sitting higher. I don't feel that I have much more space in this car, to be honest. I don't feel that I get anything more out of it as a crossover again not as a volvo cx40 as a crossover i keep saying that because i think it's necessary to insist on that i just passed the trimway rails i barely felt them i wasn't worried that i'm gonna hit anything that's true so it gives you a bit more confidence everywhere but do i really need that extra road clearance as i'm driving honestly i don't think i do i really don't think i do but uh having it it's not bad either so Again, I get the appeal, you know, I can get the appeal. I, I, I would not argue. If someone were to come and tell me like, dude, I, I really like that. That's what I want in my car. I want to sit a bit higher and, you know, I don't want to be worried about, I don't know, hitting the curve or something. Although you can scrap your wheels really easily with 20 inch wheels. But nevertheless, the point is I can understand that. Is it necessary in a city like Brussels? No. Furthermore, as I was saying, most crossovers, although they give you the impression that, and, and some, and I mean, most of them can come in four-wheel drive, they're not meant 
or off-road. Crossovers are not good off-road. I'm telling you, I've, I've experienced that. Even if they're a four-wheel drive, they will help if there's like a bit of snow. Indeed, you'll be a bit safer if you're, I don't know, in a, in a town or something where you get a lot of snow or, you know, or there's bad roads, but not really. Okay, I get the appeal there. It might be more convenient for you, but in regular cities and large cities, I don't know, Brussels, Paris, London, although people seem to get more and more crossovers and in Brussels, I, I kind of understand because the roads are really bad, but no, jokes aside, uh, I don't think it gives you any much more confidence than a, just a regular estate car. It's both front wheel drive. They both drive like regular cars when you drive them like, you know, regular cars and not trying to uh, show off somehow. Even to be honest, I think an estate car would give you a sportier drive in a sense if you want to drive it sportier i think it sticks better to the road this has higher uh, road clearance and therefore will be a bit higher up and therefore will handle a bit less uh sporty if that's something that you're into but generally so far you know this car it feels just like any other car it's normal now the trade-off indeed with most cars let's again pretend this is the same engine same powertrain same weight same everything as the corolla this will be a bit less fuel efficient you know it's a bit less aerodynamic it's a bit higher up and therefore will have more drag and therefore will use a bit more fuel i mean if that's not a concern for you using a bit more fuel and you know all that and you, you still well if you require a crossover get a crossover there's no discussion about it but um i say before we take any decision let's jump in the corolla and see what's what <sighs> See, that was a big, big bump. No problem whatsoever. The car did not scrape, etc. Now, as a driver, I'm not gonna even compare the two of them, how they drive per se, but I'm gonna compare the difference between, well, how an estate drives and how a crossover drives. In both cases, we're at the front wheel drive base, so not much of a difference feel-wise when it comes to steering. Yeah, lane assist, I'm sorry. I need to deactivate that. I hate those, <laughs> which is, Oh yeah, lane assist deactivated. So the car drives pretty normal. Are you low to the ground? Yes, you are, but not really. You're just in a general position. You don't feel like you're, you're in a sports car or anything like that. So you're not really low to the ground, but you're not very high as in a crossover where you have more of a commanding position, you'd say. So basically I think uh, you're seated very well, space good, and the car is just, you know, regular, normal driving, everyday car the only difference between this Corolla and the ones I've reviewed in the past such as the regular Corolla hatchback and the Corolla GR which is again the hatchback with the more sporty suspension and so on the real true difference between this car is that this one has a better sorry I forgot to adjust properly my mirror never do that adjust your mirrors before leaving but yeah the only real difference you'd say is this has more cargo space and more space uh, in the back, although in the hatchback Corolla, I did not feel cheated in the back. I, I could fit behind myself, no problem whatsoever. Uh, but then again, didn't have that situation here. Uh, this changes a bit headroom wise, but if you get the regular one without the, the whole panoramic, uh, it's gonna be just perfect. So yeah, more cargo space over a hatchback and that's pretty much that. So it drives like a regular car, regular hatchback. It's snappy, honestly. And uh, you know what? On the highway, when you take it, because this car I've driven the highway, the Volvo a bit less, I have to be honest. I haven't driven it that much on the highway, but this one I have. And it's, you know, it's normal. Like there's no wind noises. There's no, well, I mean, there is some, of course, this is not a Rolls Royce, but still, I mean, it's very, very practical and manageable and everything so i don't feel that this car comes with any compromise to be honest you just get more space and that's it now bumps wise and everything again i live in brussels right if i were to live in the alps probably i would be looking at an suv or something because sometimes you have roads which are not paved and all that so mm, i understand there you might need four-wheel drive because there's snow and everything but here we get snow maybe two days a year. I don't see no point in getting anything with four-wheel drive, except if you want to have a larger consumption. If you want to use more fuel, that's up to you. I understand. But yeah, some people understand that they need that to feel safer. Uh, I don't know if it rains or snows a bit outside. But to be honest with you, if there's ice on the road, your four-wheel drive won't help you very much, sadly. You just 
get good tires, you know? So yes, this will never come as a four-wheel drive. This is a front-wheel drive only. Do I need more? No, I don't. That, that's just a fact. I don't. If you live in a city or anything that's not, you know, rural from back in the maybe 50s, you don't need a crossover. To me, it just feels pointless because you get about the same space, you get about the same options, you get about the same everything, except this will, well, basically cost you less. Plus, it will generally be more fuel efficient because it's generally more uh, aerodynamic. It's less of a brick and you know, more slick. And that's how it goes for estate cars in general. Crossovers, I, I understand the appeal, you know, the commanding position, the feeling of safety. I can understand those, but I'm not sure it's really worth the trade-off. That's just it. To me, estates are just more practical in every sense of the word. So why would you want a crossover? An SUV, again, different conversation depending on your needs and everything. But a crossover? I don't know, I, I'm not sure. Although again, this is not criticism towards uh, the Volvo. I love the Volvo. Like as far as crossovers go, this is probably the best crossover I've driven, right? It's, it's a great, great car. But for my personal needs and, and preferences, I, I don't see the point in buying a crossover. I would go for a Volvo brake, for example. If I wanted to buy a Volvo, I would go for a Volvo brake instead. So yes, as you can see, this uh, comparison is quite, one-sided. First of all, subjectively, I, I'm not a big fan of crossovers and objectively, I don't think that they make much sense. You're okay, you're higher up, but you don't need to be higher up in town. Most of them are not four-wheel drive, although I know you can get the optional, but most of them don't come as standard as a four-wheel drive. Plus, you don't really need four-wheel drive. And then you say, oh, but I feel like uh, I would be safer in an SUV. I, I don't think you would. Like crash tests and everything, you can check those. And especially if you get like a you have to do something like change lanes really quickly, a car that's lower to the ground will be more adapted to doing those maneuvers and therefore might save you some rollovers. <laughs> Once again, I understand the appeal. There's, I, I'm not making a case against uh, crossovers here. I, I can understand why someone would want one, but I don't think anyone really needs a crossover. If you need something that's really good off-road or like you really need road clearance, everything, get an SUV if you can afford that. Like get something built for that guy, I don't know, or, or a pickup truck. Those are working man cars. A crossover, I really, I, I don't see the point. That's just it. Maybe that's just me. So to you guys, this is my conclusion. If I were personally to pick between crossover and estates, of course, I would pick an estate car every day of the week although I can understand some of the appealing features of crossover. But in conclusion, I just don't think it justifies the trade-off. And that's that. So yeah, if I were to pick a car, I would pick the estate. If I were to pick between the Volvo and the Corolla, well, that's a whole different question here. So I'm not gonna answer that. This is not the video, but yeah, you understand. But I'm really curious what you guys think about that. I mean, would you pick a crossover over an estate? And if yes, why? Or if you're like me and you're more like, okay, I don't like crossovers or they don't give you much in return comparison to an estate or you lose some, etc. Like, please let me know what you think about that and what's your take on it. And uh, if I should make more videos like this one, not really, you know, proper model related, more of a quick comparison between two types of cars. I could have drag raced them, but the Volvo is so much quicker. I know you like drag races. I could see the numbers on the drag race videos. That being said, if you like this video, well, make sure to like it uh, and don't forget to subscribe. It helps us a lot in getting new cars like that Volvo. Uh, that was the first time partnership and I hope there will be many more to come. As for me, it was a pleasure to see you guys as usual and talk to you about cars and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.